Chunky Tuna, thank you for a $20 super chat. What ELRS true diversity modules are compatible with the Radio Master RP4 to run Gemini? Um, th there are very few Gemini modules out there right now. There's the beta FPV. Um, there's the beta FPV Gemini module. And... Uh, the beta FPV Super G. That's, I think, the only one. And then there's the Jumper T20 Gemini, which has a built-in Gemini module, but you got to want to use the Jumper T20, which you, you might or might not. Are there any other Gemini modules? I don't know. So I think if you want a Gemini module, it's like, I'm sure that uh, Radio Master is going to come out with a Gemini module soon. I'm sure it's coming. But uh, right now it's just the beta FPV Gemini. What is Gemini? Haha, -ha, glad you asked. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I have a video about it. If you search Joshua Bardwell Gemini Express LRS, you can find it. But Gemini basically means that you have two radios and each radio transmits the packet at the same time on a different frequency. So there's redundancy there. What it means is that, like, let's say, let's say that the quadcopter is three feet away from the transmitter. Well, Gemini isn't going to give you any benefit there because all the data is going to get through. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Right? But when you get to the edge of range and your, your LQ starts to drop, now Gemini is going to push your LQ back up because each packet is going to get transmitted twice or maybe four times. Okay? And as a result, the, 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 the chances of a packet getting through are greater. The chances of avoiding interference are greater because you're on two different frequencies. So if there's interference over here, you'll transmit over there. Um, basically, Gemini increases your LQ in times when your LQ is less than 100. If you fly and your LQ is like always 97, 98, 99, 100, 97, 98, you don't need Gemini. It's not going to do anything for you. But if you fly and your LQ is going down into the 80s or maybe lower, Gemini could help you. <laughs> Kevin Sumner says, anybody taking bets on whether Radio Master's Gemini gear will be dual band? Um, so the idea there would be that you would have a 2.4 gigahertz and a 900 megahertz, for example, Gemini, and you'd be transmitting on both bands simultaneously. That's more complicated. One of the reasons it's more complicated is that 900 megahertz doesn't support the same hopping, uh, the same free, uh, packet rates that 2.4 gigahertz does. Um, and and they they don't use the same hopping patterns and so forth. Uh, so the idea that I'm going to transmit the exact same packet on both on both radios is not quite the same. The other thing is like, what's the point of that? What's the point? If you've got 2.4, like the point would be that like you'd be at a thousand hertz and 2.4 gigahertz and have an ultra low latency link that would then fail over to 900 megahertz when you got out of range. That's kind of cool, but like the Express LRS devs don't seem that interested in it. Like I've asked, I've asked, hey, you guys, isn't it? Because it's an obvious extension. And uh, the feedback that I got from, I'm not going to name names, but the feedback that I got was, Meh, I don't know if we're that interested in that. I'm being told by Kevin, Kevin Sumner that there's a pull request. Pull request for Gemini Crossband adds a hardware driver for dual band sub gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz operation. Whoa, this is cool. Hang on. I was not aware of this. Dual 2.4 and sub gig operation. No support for FLRC and no support for the D and F modes. Oh, that's okay. Uh, 
Interesting. Has this been uh, merged? Dev boards? There's a good chance. Of yeah. Yeah. It has been merged, but there's no hardware to actually run it, right? No, interesting. Oh, it's interesting. <laughs> oh, here's Captain Bry. Captain Bry says, "Interesting." Wow. Well, that's really cool. I can there there are a lot of um applications for that. Uh many of them not hobby applications. <laughs> but there you go.